of us here so far. My name is Merle Massey, and I am the coordinator of undergraduate research here at the University of Saskatchewan. Hopefully you're still there. Some uh, interesting issues with the U of S uh, access this afternoon. So hopefully that holds for throughout our whole meeting. A um, couple of housekeeping items. I do want everyone to stay muted and no video simply because we don't want to overload the system. WebEx isn't always known for its stability. So uh, unless you're actually going to be speaking this afternoon and on the round table, uh, we're going to mute, ask everyone to mute their audio and to make sure that your video is turned off. So you get to hear the melodious sound of my voice, but other than that, that's, that's what you get. Um, I do want to, um, uh, start with uh, saying that um, my name is Merle Massey and we stand here on Treaty 6 territory. I'm sitting actually, but we are here within Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. And uh, I'm very um, glad to, to be here today. I'm having, Jen, I'm having all kinds of people e emailing me that, that the link isn't working. So I'm going to just pause for a second while we fix that and uh, send people the email link. There's the uh, downside of, uh, of running too much of this ourselves. So Merle Massey, who am I? I am um, the undergraduate research coordinator here at the University of Saskatchewan. I am uh, in charge of a couple of undergraduate research programs here at the university. So the fire project, first year research experience. Some of you may have had those particular classes or a class that was designated as a fire project. So I helped to uh, organize and coordinate the fire program. I also helped to organize and coordinate the USRA program. So uh, the undergraduate student research assistants across the university. I work with the College of Graduate Studies and a few other uh, 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 areas across campus to help uh, organize and to and to uh, do this. But that's actually where we came to sure. What we realized is that all of the departments were had undergraduate students who were busy doing research. But what we found was that we didn't have a very good connector piece. We didn't have a way to connect students together particularly well. So that became something that that we wanted to to bring to the table and to offer to you, the students. Um, if I sound really formal, I apologize. I'm actually not a particularly formal person. By training, I am a farmer. I live an hour outside of Saskatoon, so I'm coming at you from bigger Saskatchewan, and my husband and I farm. So just to give you a little bit of a background about me, I'm also a writer, so I've got uh, a few books. So if you've heard my name or seen me uh, in and around, I'm pretty busy on, on a few other things. The, uh, oh, Svea, thank you so much for um, posting text. That's great. The, um, the idea for sure it was to create this connector piece for all of you. And then when things, so originally we had set it up, so we were gonna have a lot of these events live. So a lot of the webinars that we have hosted, they were originally meant to be live. Then, then we had um, a lot of um, other events, connector events, oh, like bring your, bring your faculty supervisor for pizza, things like that. So a lot of uh, physical and in-person events that we had originally had mapped out and planned, a lab crawl, a few other things. But of course, with the university's move to move everything online, we've had to move everything online. But what happened was, is that it provided an opportunity for us. So normally the university library doesn't do a lot of programming for undergraduate students in the summertime, but because of the SURE program, they have come to the table with these webinars. So we have a number of webinars and I'll walk you guys through some of those that are upcoming through throughout uh, the summer. We've also had the social sciences uh, uh, research laboratory come to the table. Normally they do a, a two week uh, training session in early May and those were all completely canceled. And we went to them and said, would you be willing to redo those events and put them online for the students in the SURE program? And, and they have agreed to do so. So we have um, 
upcoming webinars on things like Envivo, if you've never worked with that before, on um, SPSS uh, and statistics. Uh, we have a, one on um, how to design a good uh, survey. So if anybody's doing any survey work this summer, that might be a good one to check out and so on and so forth. So it's been really, really good that way. The other thing that we've been doing, so we've created a website and I'm going to walk you guys through all of that. It's, it's, um, it's about, uh, connecting you into some of the things that we have on campus. For example, safety training. You'll notice on the website that there's a section on safety training, and these are all existing uh, safety training online modules that the university has, but they've also, they're in the process of creating two more modules just for the SURE program. And so those will roll out, I think in another about week and a half or so. And so they'll, they'll be online as well. And so you can take the online ones at your leisure. Whenever it works for you, you can set those up. We've also put the link to uh, the TCPS. So these are the national ethics modules. They take about four hours to complete. A lot of you have been asked by your principal investigator to do um, uh, research modules uh, and and to to learn about research ethics and so those are there as well. The um, that so that gives you a bit of an overview of where Sure came from. We've we've talked to a lot of students uh, over the past couple of years who've had undergraduate research experiences, who've had assistive research assistantships, and we asked them, you know, what what can we add to your programming? What can we add to your to your summer of research? Because we do leave it up to the professor to do the bulk of your training. Of course, it's 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 a the thing about research is that you have to get in there, you have to do it. And it's in the process of being in there and doing it that you learn how research is done. And so we don't we don't want to get into the nitty gritty of that in terms of what your actual project is. But if there's any kind of overarching things that we can offer, that's where we decided to target our energy. And so um, so that's how we've set up the SURE program is to try and, and, and uh, do those overarching things, things like uh, how to do a really good literature search. And so the library has created uh, three seminars around that uh, or some of these other uh, training events that we have coming up. We also have some EDI training. So that's equity, diversity and inclusion. And any of you who happen to have funding that comes from NSERC uh, or really any of the tri councils, all of the tri council funding is very interested in making sure that we um, um, that we expose students and faculty, professors, researchers as well, to some of the uh, uh, really important research that that has been coming out around the 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 background biases around ex equity, diversity, and inclusion. So Aaron Prosser Luce is going to be giving a presentation in June. We also have an indigenous uh, research uh, protocols and indigenous indigenous research methodologies session that's coming up in early July, and, and that's with Dr. Carrie Borasaw's group. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to that one as well. So it's been fascinating to watch the university come to the table and 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 knowing that we have this group of students. Just so you know, right now. My my list is about 285 students from across the University of Saskatchewan who is, are are part of the um, are, are are working as research assistants across the university. And of course, if some of you who are here today aren't actually working right now as a research assistant, but you want to access the Sure program, access some of these training modules, go through some of this training, and then you'll be able to put that on your resume and go forward next year. And and when you apply for any of these uh, uh, research assistant positions, you'd be able to rise yourself to the to the top of the of the of the pack, so to speak, and and prove that you've already. Uh, um, done some of the training that 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 has often been asked. One of the things that I wanted to mention is that we've, as we were setting up the program, we took a preliminary look at doing it, this as some kind of certificate. However, the university has some pretty strict rules around what can be a certificate. So at first we thought, well, we'll just give everybody a piece of paper that says, you know, certificate of participation, but really, you know, it's like gold star for you and gold star for you and gold star for it. It just didn't, it wasn't really worth a whole, a whole lot. Really, it wasn't really worth the, the piece of paper. So at this point, sure does not have certificate status. Just so I want to make sure that everybody's clear on that. And I changed the website to make sure that we reflect that. We will, however, be able to offer you co-curricular uh, uh, certificate. So what that does is that I've, I have access to your co-curricular records. So as long as I have everybody's NSID, once we get to the end of summer and and um, we figure out how you can show me which modules you've you've uh, participated in and so on and so forth, 
we will uh, make sure that we can we can put the SURE program as part of your co-curricular certificate, and you'll be able to explain that to to various um, um, people who you might want to be uh, ad, um, going through job interviews with, and so on and so forth. And talk about not that you did a summer research project, you know, looking at these particular worms or whatever it is that you were looking at. Uh, but that you learned some particular research skills. And so that's something that we're looking at doing a little bit later on towards the end of the summer is to be able to give you the vocabulary so that you can talk about the research skill set that you develop when you're working as an undergraduate student researcher. So these are some of the things that we have going on. Uh, the program is a pilot. It's brand new. I don't promise that it's all going to be perfect. I don't promise that I'm not going to make mistakes because I guarantee you that I will. I'm good at making mistakes, actually. I'm, I, I'm A plus at that. So um, I apologize for uh, in advance for any of those mistakes that I'm going to make. Expect them. But I also wanted to put that out there to say that if you can think of any particular um, training or events or webinars that you would like to ask me to see if I can access my contacts around the university and, and bring those sorts of content to you through the program, I absolutely am willing to do that. So uh, I've, I've been taking some requests in terms of people have been asking around things like Citation, Mendeley, Zotero, things like that, some training around that. Uh, lots of requests for training around uh, writing and so that's something that we're going to be building in. So what what I will say, so by all means, if you have suggestions for me, put it on the chat, send me an email, follow me on social media, that's all fine, and uh, and, and and let me know if there's anything particular that you would that you think that you would like to access and that maybe that other research assistants across the university might get value from as well. So do bring those to my attention. I am going to share my screen once I figure out how, and I'm going to uh, uh, walk you really, really quickly through uh, the university, uh, the, you, the, the website that I have developed. What I'm going to tell you is that this is, again, same thing. It's preliminary. It, it's what we have at the moment, and but uh, it will, it will continually be added. I will send you out regular emails and let you know what's coming up. Uh, and, uh, and and I will update everything on the website. I see that we've got some um, WebEx connectivity problems, but we will, we will do the best we can. I think I'm looking to share content, right? Yes, that's what I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to walk you guys through the website and what it looks like. What do you see? Jen, can you tell me what you see? I just want to make sure that you're seeing what I want you to see. So what I'm seeing is sure student undergraduate research experience and right Excellent. under that you can join. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. Thank you very much for telling me. Okay, so this is the website. I've sent you guys all the links. So make sure if you click on it, make sure that you hit that little thing on the left-hand side, the little arrow to reload the page to refresh every time you go there, simply because um, I update it probably a couple of times a day as uh, because it's a pilot and it's so new, the website only went live less than a week ago, I believe Thursday morning. And so we've been uh, just working on it ever since and adding new things as we go along. So if you go into the website, uh, then the first thing that I want you to do is hit refresh. So I did update that uh, anybody who, who participates in the SURE program will be able to eligible to receive co-curricular co credit on their transcript. And so we'll work through the details of that as we go through the summer. So today, of course, we're on the kickoff event and orientation for students. Uh, first, I'll go through the webinars and then I'll talk about journal clubs, safety training, ethics, and some of the recorded webinars that are online. And it is our website. So if you guys know of anything that I should be linking on here, please let me know. That would be fantastic. But some of the live webinars, of course, today's the kickoff, so that's great. But on Friday, this Friday, we have comprehensive searching for your literature review with uh, Susan Murphy from the library. We have reading, analyzing, and organizing your sources for your literature review, and that's Jill McMillan. So the difference between the two is that Susan is going to you how to do a really comprehensive search, and she's going to give you all kinds of really good search tools and ideas that that you that you um, in, if you haven't done a lot of um, 
uh, literature searching on your own, this would be a really good one to start with. Then the second session is how to organize and analyze those those sources, how to how to read and analyze the uh, the journal articles that that you've pulled from your from your literature search. So that's next Thursday, and then the week after that, the following Thursday is writing your literature review. So those three kind of go together, but we've split it into three on purpose because we think that they're three separate uh, skill sets related, but separate skill sets. So feel free to register for any of those that work for you, and if if any of these register buttons or any of that stuff does not work, please just shoot me an email and let me know. I'm the one who manages the website, so, do, so just let me know. We do have a number of sessions that are coming up from uh, the social sciences and research labs. So one of them is research data management and Kevin Reed is a librarian. He's actually from health sciences, but he to you guys about how to organize and connect and and share your research. There's a lot of good strategies and tools out there around organizing and managing your research. One of the things uh, that you're going to find is that managing your uh, your data so that you can access it easy and analyze it easy is actually a major skill set unto itself. So we wanted to make sure that we offered that particular webinar so that Kevin can give you some strategies on how to organize your stuff. Developing good habits, of course, that's a good one, particularly for those of us, and we're all struggling with this. The move to work from home um, is 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 uh, quite a problem, and uh, but it, it's it's uh, sorry, I just got an email coming in from one of my speakers, so I'll deal with that in a second. Developing good habits is a hard one. It's very very difficult for. Um, all of us, not just students, but to give yourself that that to work from home and and to and to keep yourself on task and on track. This is actually something that students, even if they're in a lab, even if they're on campus working um, in the same room as their PI and so on and so forth, developing good habits is a skill set unto itself. So Gina's going to walk you through some of the strategies for that, if you're interested. Those of you who are doing work with Envivo, uh, Rachel Tang and I are, are working on setting down our date and time to get that set up, but it'll be about a two hour workshop on Envivo. Same with Anna Maria Bogdan, she's going to be giving about a two hour workshop on statistics and SPSS. And again, I will let you guys know when I've updated the website with all of these. Mixed methods, uh, that's uh, a three hour session. So anybody who's working on a research project that pulls from multiple uh, disciplines or pulls from different methods. This will give you some key concepts and considerations to consider. So that's a really good one as well. Anyone who's doing surveys this summer, who's organizing and, and going to be sending out any kind of surveys, Janelle Ferguson will be do, giving an overview on survey design. And then Tayab Shah is doing ArcGIS. So if anybody is coming from the history or geography department or environmental sciences and needs GIS and wants to have a bit of a, a refresher session or a working session with Tayab, those, that's going to be coming up soon. And I believe it's either going to be end of May, beginning of June. Then we have a couple of uh, big sessions, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion. This is Erin Prosser-Luce. She's uh, one of our, our uh, major speakers at the University of Saskatchewan. She's a, uh, a leader in this particular area. That one, uh, faculty are also welcome to come and, and join in. I have it set for 500 uh, and for, for that registration and we should be able to accommodate a high number. So when I send out the reminder for that particular one, do make sure that you forward it on to anyone else in your in your lab or department or in your research group. Uh, we wanna make sure that that one is as wide open to everyone else uh, who wants to join in and listen to Aaron talk about uh, EDI issues in research. We also have one on networking and, and LinkedIn, that one's specifically for students, uh, and that's Brock Aguito, and he's from the, um, SECC on campus, so the Student Employment and Career Center, and he'll be doing that. They're going to be doing another one a little bit later on in the summer. We haven't got the details worked out, uh, but the second one will be on um, uh, resume writing and how to frame your your um, experience, your research experience, and how to frame it really well for, um, for your job hunt. Morningstar Lodge, and this is Dr. Kerry Borasa, is going to be doing Indigenous research methods. So that'll be coming up in early July. Last summer, session on how to create a research poster. I had over 60 students come last summer. That's actually what's the start of SURE. We realized that we have a lot of uh, 
undergraduate students who are doing research across the university who might need a little more help and support. So uh, we'll be doing that uh, in July so that that gives you lots and lots of time to work on your poster throughout August. At the very end of August, tentatively planned for Wednesday, the 26th of August, we will have our summer social and poster symposium. It says likely online because I'm assuming that the university will still physically be closed or we won't be able to have that many people. Last year we had it in Convocation Hall and I don't know if we're going to be able to have all of us in one space uh, due to the COVID crisis at, at, that, um, at that time. So we'll kind of, um, Keep that one open, but that's the tentative date. If we move it online, you'll have lots and lots of communication from me to say what's going to be happening. Okay, journal clubs. So we had originally wanted to set up some journal clubs, but there's 285 of you, and I can't do that many students. Like you, ideally, you want to have about eight to ten students in a journal club. So those of you who are in departments or colleges that have existing journal clubs, I have asked the departments and colleges to continue on with those, and so I'm hoping that that happens. Um, so pharmacy, and nutrition, for example, medicine. Uh, journal clubs have happened there, but for those of you who don't know or don't have access to a journal club, please sign up and I'm going to reach out and find a way if I can uh, have, have some. Uh, <laughs> we've got some people that uh, there we go. Thanks, Jen. Um, we had a few uh, some sounds in the background. If you don't have access to a journal club, please do sign up there and I will do the best I can to to uh, get you signed up with the journal club. They are a really good way to um, really investigate what a journal article is and what it has to say and and to be able to give you the skill set that you'll need to talk and analyze a journal article really, really well. So it's definitely in that small setting is a really good way to learn how to read a journal article and do it really well. Safety training. All of these are actually from the. The, um, the safety services uh, at the University of Saskatchewan. So that that if you if you tap on that link, it actually takes you to safety services and then they have a number of online modules. The ones that most of you have to take are laboratory safety and WHMIS, not all of you, but those of you who work in a lab, they will ask you to do laboratory safety. Those are online. You can do them at your leisure and, and just uh, let me know when you've completed it and, uh, uh, and also uh, make sure that your PI knows that you've completed it. There are a few that are coming soon. Emergency response plan awareness is coming soon and safety orientation for employees. So th that safety orientation is actually for everyone at the University of Saskatchewan. I have to take it, Jen has to take it, there has to be quite a few. Uh, actually, all of us have to take it, uh, but they are moving it online and they are moving it online and we are going to be the first crew that will have access to it. So as soon as they have moved it online, they're going to let me know so that you guys can sign up for that one. So, and the office ergonomics one, that's just kind of a fun one if you wanted to take it. There is also the COVID-19 health and safety stuff to you. Those of you that do um, research in the summer, a lot of you will be asked by your PI to do uh, the TCPS2 core ethics training, and that's offered by the panel on research ethics. Uh, no, you are not required to redo any of these if you already have the certificate for them. Absolutely not. This is only just like, a, think of SURE as a connector piece. Sure is about making sure that this is kind of like a one stop shop. You can choose which ones apply to you. You are not expected to take all of these webinars, only take the ones that apply to you or any of the training that's offered here. Take the ones that your that your PI has asked you to take or the ones that apply to you or the ones that you're particularly interested in and have time to do. So the ethics training, the panel on research ethics, it's eight modules. Usually they can be finished in about three to four hours. So and you don't have to do them all at once. So just so you know, but I've I've put the link there. It is it is on the national website as well. So if you're asked to do your TCPS core ethics, it's an excellent one to put on your resume to show that you've already been through ethics training. Any researcher, no matter what your discipline is, is required to do ethics. So I would highly recommend that one. And the last one is the Social Sciences Research Lab has a number of webinars already archived. And so I've put the link there to their YouTube channel uh, so that in case that you, um, there might be something there, so check it out one of these days and uh, you'll be able to see 
if there's anything there that that is of particular interest to you. And if you have an extra half an hour or hour, you can go through those webinars. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I'm pretty much all done. Does anyone have any particular questions for me? If you do pop them in over the chat and I'll try and answer them either through uh, privately or afterward, you can send me an email as well and that'll be fine. Just remember that uh, this, this, this isn't one of those programs where I'm expecting you to do everything. That's not what I'm here for. What we're here to do is to offer you a one stop shopping place where you can see some of the things that 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 might be useful to you that you might need. Uh, also, there is a number of webinars that have been developed specifically for the shore students that are not being offered necessarily across across the campus. So yeah, you're amongst the lucky 280 who um, um, are, are receiving some special uh, uh, attention. So, you know, you can feel good about that. OK. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take a drink. Then I would like to invite Sarah Foley, who is um, going to be on the on the panel coming up. But I wanted to open it up for Sarah to give you a little bit of a chat about USEARCH, which is our undergraduate research journal here at the University of Saskatchewan. It's um, one of the things that I know that almost all of you are going to be doing is that Whereas in a normal year, especially if you've got a lab based research project, you're spending most of your time creating data. You're doing you're doing the research experiments and you're creating data this year because most of you don't have access to your actual labs or or archives or workspaces. You're working with existing data and an awful lot of you are going to be. Are going to be uh, um, going through. And and doing a lot of literature searches, writing up really, really robust literature reviews. A lot of you are going to be analyzing data and actually writing manuscripts. And so one of the reasons why I wanted to have Sarah Foley come and talk to you is because USurge is an excellent place for undergraduate students uh, to put their manus uh, to offer their manuscripts. And so yeah, Jen, if we want to toss it just, in to Sarah. Just before Sarah opens, we do have two questions on the chat. Sure. So one from Tyrell, he says, I imagine a lot of sessions aren't relevant to some students. So how many sessions would we need to attend to receive credit for the SHARE program? We are still working out the details on that, but I'll let everybody know we're, we're aiming towards about 10 hours in total. Okay, excellent. And then our second and third questions comes from Brianne. The first, the safety courses ask for a supervisor recommendation. Can we list you? Yes, you may. They know. Second question, if we are working during the webinars, is there any way we can still get the info? Our plan is to record all of the webinars. We are recording today's webinar, for example, and we are also planning to record any of the upcoming major webinars or webinars from the library and from the social sciences research lab. So yes, those will be recorded and they will be posted on the website. Great question. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's all the questions we have for now. Awesome. If we want to move it over to Sarah Foley for a couple of minutes to talk about usage, and then we will have our roundtable. Sure. Thank you so much for for having me. Um, I just I love resources and I love undergraduate research, and I'm uh, excited to talk about usage, um, which stands for the University of Saskatchewan Undergraduate Research Journal. Um, I think it's a great option for students engaging in undergraduate research to get a chance to learn about the writing and the publishing process. Um, so USurge is an online open access and peer reviewed scholarly journal um, that any student undergraduate at the University of Saskatchewan can submit their work to. Um, so we publish continually online. Uh, we do two volumes per, per term, I guess. So we usually do one winter, one spring. Um, and we accept review articles, uh, full research articles and research snapshots. Um, so research snapshots are a really cool option um, if you don't get the chance to produce a full manuscript this summer or a full literature review. Um, research snapshots are abstract style pieces that give kind of a short glimpse into what you've done over the summer, done uh, in your research and uh, an opportunity to kind of share with the undergraduate research community on campus uh, the, the cool things that, that you've done. Um, 
So for the peer reviewed process, that's uh, that's kind of the best thing about it, in my opinion. Um, I, I guess maybe I should I should loop back a little bit. I always jump in a little bit too quick. Um, but some context about like how I'm involved with the journal is uh, that I've been involved for the past three years. Um, I started with the interdisciplinary section of the journal. And then I uh, became the editor for the natural science section. And I did that for two years. So USEARCH is a multidisciplinary journal. Um, and so any student who does research at the University of Saskatchewan will produce work that is eligible for submission. So that work, uh, if it is in a full review article or research article format, um, is eligible peer review process um, as we go into publishing. Uh, and so we have experts from the field at the U.S. or uh, from outside the U.S. if no one is available on, on campus. Uh, and they do the peer review process um, as you know any major journal would. And uh, you get very detailed feedback on uh, how you can improve your article. Um, you apply those, those uh, and we, we go through the publication process of copy editing. Um, which is really a powerful opportunity to improve your writing uh, and improve your, your argumentation skills. Um, and then going through the publication process, if, uh, if all goes well, um, you know, getting published of our, our two uh, issues online, uh, our two volumes, um, is a really cool piece to put on a, a uh, especially moving into grad school, um, and generally, if you're still in your undergrad, uh, a great opportunity to learn more uh, about the writing process and to improve your skills um, for other courses. So I'd be open to taking some questions. I didn't take too much of a, a roundabout uh, route through that. Um, I suppose the last thing I'll say is that if you're interested in the journal um, information, it's online at usurj.journals.usask.ca. And the editorial board uh, is really good about answering questions. Um, it's a learning experience for everybody involved. And uh, we're definitely, you know, not a, a big, scary editorial board, uh, but we always want to, you know, help you work through any questions that you have. Um, so usurj at usask.ca is the email for the editorial team. Um, and there, any questions can, can be directed there. And I'm always happy to talk about it too, if you have uh, other questions. And anyone can ask me too. It's like, what was the name of that journal? I'll, I'll I'll hook you in. So that's not a problem. Those of you who might be considering graduate school or going on and working in 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 industry, um, having that early publication on your record and in your name is definitely a good thing. It's also a really good experience in terms of improving your writing. So I know that um, anybody who's gone through a journal article submission process and gone through that rewriting process. When you go back to university in the fall and you're taking more classes, your writing will improve. So anything that we can do to support that, we're, we're here to help. But I wanted Sarah to talk about that. Thank you very much, Sarah. I appreciate that. Jen, if we can uh, unmute and see the video for our four presenters. So Sarah's here. That's good. Uh, we do have Tasker Wanlin and Jory Lit Jukes and Sydney Murray, who's also coming on board. And we're going to uh, open up. We've got a bit of a round table planned for you. And the question that I put out uh, for this was basically, what do I wish I had known before uh, I, I started my um, undergraduate research experience? Now, Sarah, even though she is an experienced uh, student on campus, it's actually going to be Sarah's first summer working as a research assistant. So she's here on the panel as as a sort of a, a, a wide eyed new person uh, asking all of the questions around, you know, oh, what did I get myself into sort of idea. Uh, but Dory and Tasker and Sydney were all uh, research assistants last summer. And so if is everybody did I know Tasker was having a little bit of connection trouble. Did we find him? Uh, yeah, I am just on my phone on data now. My Wi-Fi is not working. Oh, sorry, Tasker. I'm sorry. 
Uh, did you t- <laughs> uh, let me know if it's expensive. I'll see if I can find some money to pay you back for this. I really appreciate <laughs> you being here. Um, no, no, actually, since since you're already chatting and we've got you, Tasker, do you want to start? What I've asked is that each of the four of them are going to uh, uh, start with a couple of minutes to just right. to give you a bit of an overview. Sorry, Tasker, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> and uh, uh, and then and then we'll go to Sydney, and then we'll go to Jory, and then we'll finish with Sarah. All right, uh, over to me now. Yep, over to you. <laughs> okay, um, I guess uh, one of the things that I found really helpful for uh, my undergraduate student research was uh, focusing on like myself and my own thoughts and feelings and what I liked and didn't like about it. Because one of the big reasons why I am doing summer research is because I want to basically see how well I kind of jive with it and um, if it's the right like career for me and what what I do like and don't like about it. Um, and so I think being really, I think self-evaluating yourself is something that's really important to do and to think about going into it. Um, so yeah, I'm drawing a bit of a blank uh, right now. I had, I, I, I knew what I was gonna say before this. Um, but yeah, focus, focus on how you're feeling because like your state of mind is really important when you're doing anything that's challenging for your brain or any of that stuff. Um, also I discovered that I really like, uh, socializing and talking to a bunch of new faces. So that was one of the more, (laughs) that was one of the things that I had to really, uh, out in research because I thought I was going to be talking with people a lot more than I actually ended up doing. Um, so be prepared to have a bunch of ways to break monotony and kind of break your day up and keep yourself, keep your brain interested in looking at new things. Um, another thing that is really important, I think, in doing undergraduate research is to ask a lot of questions um, because one of the whole points of this is that you're learning from people who are more experienced than you and to do that you have to ask them a bunch of questions Um, and it's also going to help prevent you from getting stuck or messing up and if you do get stuck or mess up then you definitely really need to ask questions because that's going to be the best way you get out of it Um, and the other thing that uh, I would say is to just be proud of yourself for what you are achieving because like I mean, I was pretty lucky in that I got to, I did get to go to a conference and I did get to have my name on a paper. Um, But even just like being in usurge and getting research experience is already an achievement in its own right. Because like, you know, you interviewed a professor or I guess you got interviewed by a professor and they chose you because they thought you had a good hardworking personality and that you're smart. So, you know, be proud of yourself, focus on yourself, and ask a lot of questions. Tasker, that's awesome. I, uh, it, it's, it's something that, that we learn is that, I don't know who else remembers this from high school, but my children are 18 and 20, so we just finished high school. That's, that's just in the rear view mirror, and I can remember that asking for help was one of those things that you didn't do in high school. You wanted to be the smart kid who never had to ask for help. In university, we flipped that paradigm. We actually want you to ask for help. And the more you ask for help, the better your process will go. So um, if you're still holding on to that, no, I'm going to figure it out for myself. That's part of what you do in undergraduate research, but Tasker's suggestion to make sure that you ask lots of questions and look for help, really smart. Yeah, and ask questions to yourself too. Agreed. Um, yeah. yeah. Sydney, I want you to go next. Hi, okay. So I'm just going to kind of introduce myself here. So my name is Sydney Murray. I actually just finished my toxicology degree. Uh, so I had the chance to do research in the summer starting in May of last year to August. And so I actually got to work with C. elegans. So you guys probably have a little bit of Um, knowledge with it in some of your classes, but they're tiny little microscopic worms. And I actually see a few familiar faces in the crowd here on WebEx. So I will answer some of the questions that I was given. But the one thing that I will say about um, research, if I could tell myself that it's all about resilience and it's about 
being kicked down more times, but learning how to come back from it. And just like uh, Tasker said, how it's about learning from your mistakes. I'm such a big advocate for that. It's you have a mistake, but how are you going to go about that challenge next? And I don't know, there's a lot of times where you're faced with a lot of problems and you think, holy shit, excuse my language. I have no clue where I'm going, but it's about reanalyzing is what makes a great scientist. Um, the other thing I will say when I started research, I was absolutely scared to death because I am a little bit of a type A person. I hate making mistakes, but that is all that research is about. Um, I'll kind of talk about that a little more in my questions that I was given, but the last thing I'll kind of say is that the amount of skills that you get from research that aren't really talked about is so much greater than you're ever going to get from a class or from a textbook or I finished I've just completed my degree and if I hadn't had that research experience that I did I don't think I would be confident in my knowledge as now going into the world as a toxicologist or a potential medical student just things like that so that kind of started off and i'm also glad i'm on this is the first time i've done my hair in about five weeks so <laughs> that's real that's really I, I said to sydney okay we're going to record this she's like oh, okay i'll go do my hair <laughs> that was great. uh sydney if you wanted to to um actually we'll we'll maybe keep going and, and we'll do that the as we do go through the round table you'll probably be able to address some of those questions is that okay okay yeah, that's great Awesome. Jory, you're up next. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jory LeJukes. And just like Sydney, I was able to conduct uh, some research last summer from May to August. And my project was uh, focusing on the effects that light pollution can have on migratory birds. So I got to go out in the field and capture some <laughs> little white crowned sparrows and uh, basically just expose them to some different situations and sort of see what happened. Um, I think that one of the biggest things, uh, in addition to Sydney's comment about resiliency um, for going into research for your first time is to go in with an open mind. Um, never bottleneck yourself into any one idea or like thought process because you're gonna get knocked down. It just happens. Um, and one thing I just thought about while listening to Sydney talk there is that you learn things by doing them, but I think you honestly learn them better by doing them wrong the first time, because then you know what to look for. Uh, and honestly, it's just, if you go in with an open mind, you'll be flexible and you won't sort of be disappointed in yourself if you get something wrong, because everybody makes mistakes and that's how we learn the best, honestly. So yeah, other than that, Real questions, that's sort of all I have to say. We're gonna let we're gonna let uh, Sarah talk for a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna have the four of you go through your questions and, and talk about and sort of discuss between the and play off of each other. Um, so Sarah, if you wanna introduce yourself a little bit, I know you just did, but but uh, talk about how you got into your process of, of being a student researcher this summer. Sure, yeah, so I have actually just finished a uh, double degree with political studies and environmental biology. Um, and so I've done a little bit of research stuff uh, more in political studies um, casually throughout, um, you know, the past year. Um, and I had a research or not a research, but an internship with Global Water Futures before that um, in knowledge mobilization. Um, so I thought I was going the more political studies um route in research but then i happened upon a uh, life in the north class where we got to go out and do field work and i just absolutely fell in love with ecology in the field um and so this year my final year i was really feeling like okay this is my time like i i know i want to do this i got to figure out how um so i enrolled in the uh biology 380 which is a research experience in biology where we did uh, a cool project um, with acoustic recordings um, investigating boreal owls uh, and habitat um, associations with, with owls. Um, I worked on boreal owls, so there was other species of owls uh, involved in there. Um, and so then 
after that, Chris Morris was the supervisor, and I asked her uh, if she would be willing to take me on as a research assistant um, or as a research student this summer. Um, so I'm doing work uh, with ArcGIS, mapping wetland buffers uh, and marginal areas on fields um, cropped to perennial forests, uh, and that's going to kind of link up with the um, acoustic data aspect that exposed to a little bit with biology 380 um, in using that uh, acoustic recording system to investigate bird diversity impacts. Um, so and it's so, an interesting left turn for you. And I'm excited that, you know, there's kind of policy uh, impacts uh, of wetland um, management with farmers and their practices. So yeah, I, uh, I'm really happy with how I ended up here, but it was definitely an experimental road where I was like, thought I was going the policy route. And then I was like, oh, big left turn out into the, out into the bush. So yeah. And that absolutely can happen. And I'm really delighted to hear that. And that's a really good framework for where we're going next, because what I did is that I asked these four students to consider uh, some questions around, uh, around sort of the worst thing that happened to you, the best thing that happened to you. There's, there's sort of a variety of questions. And uh, uh, so I want to open it up and, and uh, uh, Tasker, if you want to, to address any of the questions, it, were, were there any particular questions that spoke to you that you wanted to talk about your best experience, your worst experience? How did things go? Uh, let me just look at these questions. Uh, I was alluding to them a little bit at the start. Yes, you were. Um, yeah, let's see. I guess... Um, Probably like the getting stuck part and uh, just ask like asking questions to yourself and like what about the sit or just asking a bunch of questions about the situation to yourself and analyzing it um, and then uh, asking other people if you still can't figure it out uh, was definitely one question that stuck out to me. Um, and uh, biggest fear or problem was like uh that was that was a tough question for me because like i didn't exactly know what to completely expect like exactly what to expect going uh becoming a usra student um so like i didn't really have a ton of fears um but i was nervous that like i wasn't going to like research or that like i wasn't going to be good at it or that i'd like crumble under the pressure or something like that um and i think way that I overcome those kinds of thoughts is to tell myself that like if if you are nervous um, or if you are scared that you're not going to do a good job then what that really means is that you care and if you care then you're going to work hard enough that you are going to do a good job. Any of the rest of the three of you want to jump in on that? That was awesome. Sydney, Sarah. I will speak to that really quick. Um, so for some of you that maybe or have don't have any preconceived notions like Tasker said and just kind of went in hands on, uh, I'd actually met with my prof a few times before I started research and I was really terrified that I wouldn't meet the expectation that my prof was expecting. And I think that maybe a lot of you will feel like that with your PI and you think, oh my gosh, they expect me to be at X level here. And I, this is my first time even using a microscope or pipetting or, oh my God, I have to a PCR. I've never even done that before. Um, but just know that they've been there once as well. They've been an undergrad or a master's. They, everyone starts somewhere. So just be kind to yourself and just be okay with making mistakes, just kind of like Tasker and Jory said. So I thought I'd add that in there. That's good. Jory, anything to add? Uh, yeah, don't go in thinking that your prof expects you to be at a certain level or anything. They just expect an effort out of you, honestly. And if you put in a hard, hard day's work and you put in the effort, that's what they'll really care about and that's what they'll appreciate. Did you have a, a going in? Did you have any particular fears or problems that 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 you had going in that you remember? Myself, I was terrified that I had no idea where to go next with anything. Um, the way my project had sort of panned out, um, I needed to catch migratory sparrows, and they migrate uh, right through at the beginning of May. So I had to completely 
designed my whole experiment in the first few days of me actually starting. So it was pretty scary, honestly, not knowing what to do or uh, what to do next, really. So um, the, the best way to I sort of got through it was pretty much just organizing everything uh, based on what I need to do and take steps backwards on how to get there. So I, I wanted to have my uh, experimental setup sort of finished at the facility I was working at, and I wanted it to be ready for the birds to come so I can uh, get going with my project. So what was the, the last thing I would need to do? And then I just sort of work backwards. Um, it was a bit easier for me to do it that way. Might not be for some people, but that's sort of how I got through that fear. Tasker, how about you? Uh, what about me? For what? Did, sorry. Was was there any <laughs> any? What was your? What was the biggest? What was the biggest fear that you had last summer as you were heading into the whole thing? Um, again, really, just that I'd be like super lost and not know what to do and kind of crumble under the pressure. Um, that's, a, that's a tough one. Yeah. So that's the the same thing that or similar or the same as what I said before, um, where the way that I kind of overcome that is just telling myself like, hey, if you are nervous about, you know, not knowing what to do or not doing a good job of something, then it means that you care. It is a really um, valuable thing. One of the questions right. that I, one of the questions that I asked all of you students and and Jory, Sydney, you can jump in. Uh, what unexpected or expected skills did you develop? Uh, I'm gonna pop in first. This is actually my favorite question um, that you gave me. So I think there's three skills that maybe I didn't know that I had, but I kind of found through this experience of research. And so I'll kind of talk to each of them. So the first one was probably all of you undergrad students can kind of speak to this and understand this. So in university, you learn the lectures, you learn the textbook, you do the labs. And so I remember sitting in one of my techniques class, learned how PCR worked, wrote the exam, memorized it, regurgitated it on the test, and then just threw it out my brain because, oh my God, when am I ever gonna need that again? Was the thought process at the time. And then later in my research this summer, I actually had to know how to do a PCR. And so I had to know how it works. I had to be able to explain it to myself, to others. And I really learned on a way deeper level about how it actually works versus if I'm just sitting in a lecture hall. So my first thing is, is taking the information you've been given and actually applying it makes it stick with you. It also doesn't help when I did my PCR and my thesis, it failed about four times. So I could tell you how to do it back to back to back to back. But so that's my first thing. Um, my second thing that kind of Jory uh, spoke on was kind of learning and going back towards it. I think critical thinking is the number one thing you gain in research because you face so many roadblocks all the time. So it's failed. How am I going to do it again? And also just learning flying solo by yourself for the first time and having a problem and maybe not asking your prof that second or time, but thinking in your own head, like Tasker said, thinking and feeling where you're going. And the last thing that I would say that I kind of gained in my undergrad um, is patience. So I am not a super patient person by any means, um, but research really teaches you that things take time and that you just sometimes have to go about it in a way that you wouldn't the first time. So I kind of use that example about um, PCR, but I did my undergrad research and then last fall I did my thesis. And so if I hadn't gained the patience that I had gained from my summer research, um, I had my gene expression trials with my worms. It's about a 32 hour process and it takes about 10 days and it failed four times during the course of my thesis. And I don't think that I would have kept coming back to it if I hadn't learned how to cope with failure. So I think those are my three skills. And even if you guys are thinking, I don't want to become a postdoc, I don't want to do this, just try your hand at research because you'll even gain skills that you could take away maybe to a professional college or um, working in the field. So that's kind of how I would answer that unexpected skills. And now I know how to do a PCR with my eyes closed. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jory, what would you add to that? What what were the skill sets that the unexpected or expected skill sets? Uh, I think honestly, one of the unexpected ones was 
sort of I got really good at doing stats. Not not complicated stuff, but like most of the introductory statistics that you are taught in first, second, third year, I never had to use them for the past couple of years, and then all of a sudden it's thrown into me and I'm like, Okay. Uh I could do this. Oh, and because I have this, I can use that. And it just sort of all came back, which is, it's kind of surprising how it works, honestly. But you do, as Sydney said, you do learn a lot more by doing things. Um, <laughs> my favorite unexpected skill, off-road driving. Um, I was, as part of some field work I was doing, I was a part of a wetland uh, sampling team that went across uh, southern Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba sampling wetlands for pesticides. And one of my favorite things, honestly, was just, you know, going in the back roads, dirt roads, through fields sometimes uh, with trucks and like UTVs and stuff. And <laughs> it was honestly so much fun. <laughs> um, you get to do so many fun little things uh, in field work, especially if it takes you out for like days or weeks on end. Um, you have so much fun. Uh, that's so so we're going to hope well. that everybody gets that kind of thing. But of course, with our <laughs> COVID crisis, the reality is a lot of us are going to be doing this. You know, we're going to be True. doing a lot of work on our own, in our own space, in our on our own computer, doing analysis, doing literature searches, doing writing. So that's awesome, Jory. Um, if anybody needs to have a socially, you know, I, I'll have to take you guys out to my farm. I have three quads. We can go quadding. It'll be a great time. <laughs> But uh, the, yeah, any other unexpected skill sets that you guys want to talk about? And Sarah, feel free to jump in at any time. I know your questions, because you haven't done yours yet, are a little bit different. But if there's anything that you wanted to jump in with, please go ahead. What what skills do you think you might you might be learning this summer? Well, to kind of uh, go from Jory's comment uh, into what is actually going to happen, I thought I was going to be doing uh, a lot of hardcore field work this summer and then things all drastically changed um, and I'm really excited actually to learn some more of those technical skills. I'm, I'm very confident, you know, that I can like uh, go out and do the, the hard work in the sun, but I'm less uh, skilled at like, you know, computer <laughs> technical details sort of stuff. Um, so I'm really excited to learn ArcGIS uh, to do some mapping uh, and especially the stats portion of things because I constantly wish I had more stats understanding uh, and just doing it, it sounds like that is the way I'm going to get my, my stats uh, figured out. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, I think one of the things that you've all kind of touched on in your own way is is that a USRA or a research assistantship of any kind is really about taking your own learning in your own hands, figuring out, okay, I don't know how to do that. Okay, now I need to teach myself how to do that, which is different than what happens uh, in in a in a setting in a classroom setting, right? Because that's presented to you, you memorize it, you write the exam, and it's gone, right? Like what Sydney said. But if you if you've discovered something that is like, I need to know how to do this, or I need to know who else has done this in the past and how did they go about it? Well, that's a literature search. I got to go and find, you know, who else has done this. And so it's it 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 is a skill set unto itself to know how to teach yourself to realize what you don't know and go find it. How much of that did you guys have to do, Tasker, Jory? Yeah, definitely. Um, literature searches were something that I had barely done before at all. But uh, yeah, in my first couple weeks of research last summer and in my first uh, couple days of research this summer, that's been a lot of what I've been doing. and. I guess you just kind of learn as you go, like what kinds of certain keywords and things you try to pick out in papers, and then you try to find uh, where that paper references other papers to try to find out more information about it. And just being able to like really quickly and efficiently follow that kind of trail um, is something that I really honed a lot last summer. And it it's definitely gonna be something that I work on a lot this summer too. Um, and another thing about that is control F is your friend when you're doing literature searches. It's, it's an incredible tool and you can find like the exact protein or the exact, uh, gene that you want to look at in that article in like a couple seconds, uh, because it definitely beats like reading through the whole research article to find like a little 
just like the small piece of what you want. Um, of course, reading whole research articles is another thing that you should do, but sometimes you yeah, just want to like be finding case. certain things quickly. Oh, that's right. Learning how to skim a journal article is actually the skill set that you want because that's 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 the yeah. one that you're going to be able to go through and pick out what you need as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. The the uh, looking to see what was my final question. What was your proudest moment? I guess I can sort of start things off on that. Um, last summer, I was a part of the research symposium where we got to present our posters for our final works. Um, and my proudest moment isn't exactly uh, the symposium itself, but what happened after. Um, I was fortunate enough to do really well at the symposium, and I had a great time. Uh, saw some awesome presentations, and and then afterwards, my lab. Um, went for a little celebratory, you know, round of drinks and dinner uh, just at Louis across the way. And we we're all sitting down at the table and in the same conversation where my PI uh, sort of told everyone how, how my symposium went, uh, she also announced that one of our other lab mates had a major publication come through uh, with a huge scientific research journal. And it was just seeing that my lab mates were just as excited for me as they were for uh, this person who got a major publication. It just was really self gratifying and, you know, sort of made me really proud of myself that all of the, the struggles and stress of teaching myself all these things in the summer was worth it. And it was a lot of fun, honestly, when I look back. That's fantastic. Sydney Tasker, what were your proudest moments? I think my proudest moment is just generally being able to do research and do something that I'm interested in and can talk about. Um, like talking to my family and friends and saying, uh, and just explaining my research to them and they'd be like, wow, that's actually really cool. That was, that was a neat moment and something that was kind of new for me. Um, so yeah, it was just, the thought of uh, just doing like actual scientific research in a lab with like a professor who's well known in the university that's that's pretty special I think um, and then another I guess I'll, I'll add another one in um, about a month or two months ago um, my supervisor emailed me the manuscript uh, of the paper they wrote about the study that I was working on last summer and my name was third on that paper. So that was really, really, really cool to see. Um, yeah. Those are really proud moments. How about you, Sydney? So I think I have two really proud moments. Um, I got to be at the same poster day a symposium as Dory. And so it was my first time presenting research to not only other scientists and other undergraduate students, but it was presenting it to lay people. And so I think one of the things that maybe gets lost in science is being able to explain it to your grandma or your uncle in a way that they can understand. And so I think that by being able to do that, you one can really show the significance of your work, but also make the public interested in why it matters that I'm working on birds or I'm working on worms or just kind of showing that and making the public maybe want to be a part of that, want to invest in that. And so I think that was um, also a blast actually getting to have my poster and seeing everybody else's. Um, but the second one that I think would probably be uh, my most proud, also just as an undergraduate student in general, is my work that I did in the summer actually got published. So I got my name on my very first paper. And so that was super exciting. It just kind of validated um, all the work and probably carrying on that work into my thesis and finishing that. So I think, yeah, it, it just, people don't really, when you, okay, when you're an undergrad and you go to try and find a paper that proves your work and you kind of skim somebody's and then you just kind of click to the next one to have my name and just remembering all the hard work uh, that actually went into it, even though someone's going to probably reference one line of it and never read the whole thing. But yeah, so I think it'd be that to answer your question. I think that's brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Sarah, what are you expecting? Sorry, have I missed anybody? I have a proudest moment. 
ask her. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, I can, I can uh, uh, speak to what Sydney just said of uh, explaining like your research and the work you've been doing to like your grandma or to just the general public. I think the communication of science and like the research that you're doing is probably one of my favorite aspects of it because, uh, yeah, I mean, partly because I really like talking. Um, and then also because, uh, again, what Sydney said is you can see how it's like significant or interesting to other people and trying to and like getting to explain it so that people who don't really know anything about the topic can understand it. Makes a big difference. This is this is an area that I've actually uh, organized uh, all the sessions and conferences on. It's something I'm also very passionate about. So I'm probably going to be developing a little bit more communication stuff for July and August. I think May and June are pretty busy for those of you who are going to be taking any of the any of the webinars through sure. Uh, but uh, I'll be aiming for a little bit in July and August to kind of up our communications and to do a bit more uh, special special and specific training around communications. So um, thanks for the heads up on that. I think that that's a uh, really, really good. Sarah, what are you most looking forward to this summer? I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to kind of develop some relationships with uh, different researchers uh, in, in the lab group uh, and researchers uh, on campus. I think that's this is a really cool opportunity to kind of get to know uh, peers and participate in some in some learning experiences together, although remotely. Um, <laughs> I am looking forward to a very brief uh, stint in the field. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, am also looking forward to uh, the opportunity to think about kind of that science communication aspect as well, since the work that I'm doing um, is like farmers trying to figure out how to, you know, partner with Ducks Unlimited in Canada, get some better outcomes in that in that regard. Um, yeah, I, I really like that overlap between uh, how things operate in the real world and you know what the science looks like uh, and how that can be made applicable. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my big excitement. That's super awesome. Okay, so any of the four of you, if anyone has any final comments, now is your time. Um, I'll just quickly pop on here. So the first thing I will say is um, I am literally doing nothing this summer. So if anybody has any questions or would like any help, please feel free to email me and I can give it um, on the chat. And the second thing that I will say um, kind of pertains to research kind of doesn't. But if any of you are right now, your first and second year and you are looking for a major and you're kind of stressed in between which one you want to take, I'm a toxicology major. And I think it's such a fantastic program that has <laughs> I, I okay, we're a very small college. And so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to email me. But I just want to put that out there. It's, very unknown and we also offer a lot of research too so that's the only thing i'll say but yeah <laughs> there's a plug that's hilarious anybody yeah. else any, fun, <laughs> any final comments if we're throwing in plugs now well <laughs> oh, i won't do it tox is a good program though i will is. say that i decided <laughs> to take a minor so it's a good it's a good one unknown. <laughs> Because nobody knows where your building is. I think that's the that's the secret. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, yeah, exactly. We're in the middle of nowhere, and we only have about six graduates a year. But yeah, it's a very good program. So, if anyone wants to email me, please do that too. That's very generous. Thanks, Sid. Tasker, any final thoughts? Uh, not really. Um, I could, I could, I could do a plug for USAS Improv, but that's pretty unrelated. <laughs> so. Just do it now because we're that's just at so that point. Abs absolutely. USAS Improv is super great and it's hilarious and the shows are a lot of fun and they're only $5 for students. Um, <laughs> if COVID's over by the time next year kicks up, you should definitely watch some of our shows. I think that that's brilliant. I do have a request for all of you. Um, and and including the my thank you very much for our four panelists um i'm going to give you my 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 clap thank you so much for agreeing to come and to offer your thoughts that was uh, really i think coming from students it's so much more fresh you guys can talk to each other but that's actually my final problem and that's something that i want to ask all of you to think about 
I can I can arrange and and uh, organize webinars and training events and that kind of thing, but I'm trying to find ways to connect you guys to each other so that you can reach out to each other when you're stuck so that we can have, I don't know, like a Friday afternoon, everybody sit down with a drink, let's just discuss what's happened with us this week, something. Like we need to be able to connect to each other. And and so I am open to all ideas that you guys might have around for that. So please send me emails, uh, send me send me some comments on the chat. I am, inter because it's, it, for me, if there's any way that I can, know that yes i'm kind of coordinating this and leading this but it is yours so make sure as in sure the student undergraduate research experience make it what you need it to be tell me what i can do to support you if any of you have any particular ideas or you want to lead something or you want to try something now is the perfect opportunity and i will give you all the supports i can to help you or take your ideas and run with them either way so if anyone has any thoughts around, because we can't do our our lab crawl like I'd originally planned or our, our pizza, you know, thing, or you bring your faculty for, for ice cream social, all of those sorts of things that I'd originally envisioned, I can't do those. Um, I've been told that I'm probably going to be working from home until at least the end of June uh, at this point. So, uh, yeah, so at least for the next couple of months, I want it, but I want to make sure that all of you feel connected into me and feel connected to each other. So any ideas that you guys have on that, I'm all ears. After that, yeah, if you have any further questions about the program, just, just think of it like a smorgasbord. Nobody's expected to do all of the training, but if you see something that applies to you and that would work for you, uh, then then I'm happy to uh, to support you and connect you in, in any way that I can. If you think of any webinars that we need to have and then I don't have listed, by all means, send me an email, send me your suggestions. This is all about making this program what you need. Uh, there's some there's some thanks coming in on the chat. Thank you to our four presenters, our four students. Um, so uh, a round of applause for all of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you to Jen Meinhart for uh, uh, being our host and and taking care of everything in the background for me. Thank you to Hugh Seva, who's my summer research assistant. He's been taking notes. If anybody has any suggestions, ideas, thoughts, please feel free. And that's it. That's sure. And uh, we would uh, uh, thank you for joining us and um, see you again next time. OK, take care. Virtual claps. I love it. Thanks, Jessica. Bye, everybody.